and uh, one of them is that um, when you're listening to these sharings, right, that I do on Wednesdays, um, it's good to take notes because the, we learn better when we're taking notes, by the way. When we're typing, is not as good. But when we take notes, our brain uh, learns, yeah, learns more. And so that's interesting. Um, so I recommend you to, to be in learning. Not so much to be in understanding. If you don't understand, that's fine. You don't need to understand, but you, you, I would invite you to learn. It's two different things. Sometimes people confuse learning as understanding. The other thing about that is that sometimes we think we need to understand so that we can now use what we're, what we're understanding for something. That's falling in the trap that we're in, which is we're thinking we're machines. So let's listen very carefully so that I can take this information and then apply it right away in any way that I can, and therefore my life will be better. It's a trap that we don't often notice. And it's because we're living in this world that is so driven by Show me, show me what you do and I'll determine who you are. And so be careful with the listening that you're doing to see if you're falling into that trap of like, I need to listen so that I can use this and make it my own or something. And then just, uh, you know, maybe be accepted in society or be uh, known for whatever it is that you want to be known for. So we've been talking about the ability to partner and I'll continue today with the ability to partner. In fact, one of the decisions that was made from the community is that we're going to be guided by the seven roots throughout the year in almost like a, as a map so that we know what we're talking about. There is more structure in what we're actually addressing or you know, offering in anything that we're doing. So this month we're, we're in the ability to partner and we'll continue with this ability to partner. So when we speak about ability to partner, we focused on a couple of matters. One of them is the ability to partner with others, right? And the other piece is the ability to partner with our own selves. But you wanna ask the question, what does that mean? Like when I say ability to partner, what does that mean, right? Because it can be interpreted in so many ways. And so going a little deeper into this question, what does it mean to partner? And most people believe that the following, if I partner with my own self, I have a greater chance of developing greater partnership with others. Well, that's not true. In fact, how many times have we been deceived? We're going into some sort of relationship thinking that we're being true to ourselves. And in fact, down the road, we realize, oh, but we were betrayed. We thought we were in partnership because I was partnering with me thinking that I was being truthful in our relationship. But it didn't work out so well. Some of these discoveries in partnership can be extremely painful 
because some of them happen with some other people that we thought it's impossible. They will not betray us. It is just not going to happen. And there you go. It does happen. And so when you think about partnering with yourself, it really is a discovery of what it means. It's not really like, oh, I'm going to be truthful to me and therefore my whole life will be solved. No, I, I suggest that you get out of your fantasy and land in a more in ground that is more truthful to you, right? That, that's the whole idea. It's to be more truthful to you. So, I'm speaking already of the piece that I spoke about last time, which has to do with self-deception. In fact, you know, we are very much aware of self of deception on the outside because we live it every day right we buy things that the company or the brand promises it's one thing and then later we find out oh but it's not really that's not really true whether it's our cars or our refrigerators or our you know uh the stores that we buy from the service that they provide or the the products that we buy are not what they are promised to be when we buy them many times in fact the quality of the products that we're buying these days is way worse than it was before when i was a child or when some of us were growing up. I, I think all of us can relate to that, right? It's like even the clothing, everything that we're buying is just not as good as it was before. And so we are deceived on the outside on a regular basis. But the question of how we deceive our own selves is also quite useful to notice. So from research, we know that we learn to deceive ourselves from a very early age. In fact, it starts from the time we're about six months old, that we learn to deceive ourselves so that we can get what we want. So we become very attached to the outside from a very early age. Of course, it makes sense because we depend on the outside for food and for warmth, right? But that deception goes, up, goes unnoticed because the world does function from the outside to the inside. So it's like as long as I get food and as, I, as long as I get warmth, then I'm good. But if I don't get those um, necessities of life, then we learn from a very early age that that's not a good thing. Like uh, we're going to be in trouble. So we start playing with, okay, well, how much should I cry until I get attention? Right. Uh, and then of course, each of us has a different background. So I can look at all of you now and, and know that each of you has had a very different upbringing from each other, from, from all of us. Some of us were, grew up with parents who, who were very dependable. For example, they gave us what we needed when we needed it but some of us do not have that background we have a different story 
it also is a different story with the receiving of love. So how our fathers showed us love may, may be different for each one of us. And therefore, we developed a different relationship with the receiving of love, again, with our mothers as well. And the relationship between same gender is particularly important. So we often learn tacitly from the same gender parent. And we, it is not uncommon for us to attach to the opposite gender parent from an early age. Therefore, the psychological theories from ever for, for the history of psychology speak about these relationships in different ways with the father and the, the daughter and the, the son and the mother, for example. So why am I mentioning that? Because if we don't, if we're not receiving the love that we naturally want or want to express, want to receive and want to express, if that's not really happening in, in a normal, like uh, ideal way, I mean, then we deceive. And we deceive in very strange ways, like, no, I don't accept hugs from you. Um, I'm uncomfortable if you're going to start hugging me. Or I want to hug everybody. I just love hugs. But what's really happening is not really the story that is showing up on the outside. It might be a very different story, the one that you're telling yourself of why you are looking for so much connection and or disconnection, why you are so like uncomfortable with, with this, you know, um, natural sense of being connected with another person. And what is your reaction to that connection? Also notice that in our community, we have, you know, many more, I, I think many more women than men. Is that right, Janet? Like, yeah. So the relationship between men and women in our community has a, a role, right? And that's something we don't talk about so far. We, we haven't talked about, but there has been attention to the masculine and the feminine, for example, within our community. But we haven't gone so much into that so far. But I just want to mention it because when we are evolving, we are for sure going to get triggered. That's going to happen for sure. And when we get triggered, we, we will retrieve or we will attack. What, one of those, right, is like, how do we deal with fear? Well, we become aggressive, we, we, we fly, you know, we flee the scene. We try to be friendly when we're not feeling friendly. For example, I'll just be kind, but really inside I want to twist Ruben's neck or something, you know, somebody's neck. I'm very used to that because I've been working with the evolution world practically all my life. So I've been attacked many times. And I've been attacked in public in the middle of a, of a big conference or something. At the beginning, it used to surprise me. It's like, why is this person so angry at me? Like, what have I done? <laughs> right? So it took me a while to realize, oh, that's normal. It's normal to feel angry. It's normal to feel pissed off or rejecting something or um, 
judgmental, for example. Well, he, he or she didn't say it the way he should have said it, therefore he doesn't know, or I disagree, and excuse my language now, but fuck, fuck the person and fuck the world. I won't show up to these meetings anymore. Uh, and then about a month later, it's like, well, maybe I was overreacting. Uh, maybe <laughs> something was happening within me that wasn't really settled yet. But I'm just saying it's normal to have a reaction, you know, when you're in this world of evolving yourself. And this has a, t a lot to do with your partnership with yourself. Because if you're going to judge yourself, you know, all the time about your reactivity, it's not so much of a kind partnership. It's more like I'll just shape myself into whoever, you know, I think the world needs me to be so that I can um, be accepted or whatever. So, This is part of the reason I say right when I'm speaking. Um, because um, you are, sometimes we don't hear things, for example. Sometimes we hear things the way we want to hear them, not the way they were said. And then we blame the person, but you said this. And it's like, hmm. And sometimes we even say it to our own selves, but how could I have been so stupid, you know, to have done X, Y, Z? I look like a, an idiot in front of everybody and then we have people in the world saying well it's very useful to be vulnerable and then there is a whole commercial offering about you becoming vulnerable and then it takes you 20 years to realize but why did i do that like what, what was the point of me becoming vulnerable oh i don't know I just wanted to be part of something. And since there was somebody talking about vulnerability, I just jumped on the train of vulnerability. And 20 years later, I realized that I was actually punished for being vulnerable. <laughs> so that's why I say stop. Take a good look at what do you mean by partnering with yourself? Like, well, what does that really mean? Do not try to understand. Try to discover. I started the conversation today about, like, don't try to understand, try to discover. It's, discovery is a beautiful process. And you're in charge of your discovery. Whereas maybe the world is in charge of your understanding. Like how many of us have been punished for not understanding? But how about like, oh, are you discovering? And how are you deceiving yourself? into believing something that you don't believe. So trying to convince yourself of something that you really don't want to convince yourself of. Let me give you an example. If I get a result, then I'm going to be worthy of something. Um, in other words, my self-worth will increase in the world. Well, really? Is that true? 
I can't tell you guys how many people, multi millionaires I've worked with, incredible achievers, like world renowned achievers, that when we close the door and says, okay, Ruben, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm a complete mess. And they're embarrassed to tell me this because everything looks good on the outside, but their inner world is a mess. And then I say, well, didn't you achieve everything? Aren't you so rich and so accomplished? You have so many trophies and diplomas and you're well renowned for all your stuff. And yes, Ruben, but I don't think it worked. So the self-deception can go a long ways. You can convince yourself that of anything, basically. But what does it really mean to partner with you? That's why I say none of these roots are going to tell you how. But you're going to tell yourself how. And the good news is that now you have a direction. It's not that you have to go look, sign up for the 100 self-help development courses out there and spend 20 years of your life and realize, I don't know why I did this. Now you have a direction that you can take your own journey and discover for yourself what's actually true for you. And you can stand and speak your voice. Now that's a different route, of course, author yourself, but I'm just saying partnering is a route that combines with your power to actually stand strong without having to apologize for all the requirements that you have from the world to become so that you can be accepted into the echelon of nonsense. <laughs> By the way, the, the, all of these roots are cannot be presented unless there is an opening. That's the way evolution works. You can't talk about certain things unless it is part of the discovery. Otherwise, why would you talk about it? It would just be more understanding. <laughs> 